So I went to Walmart, I got my greens. Um, one of the things that I do to ensure that our salads will last for seven days is that I make sure that I'm buying triple washed organic greens so I don't have to wash them myself. And um, I know that's controversial. Some people say they still wash them. That's entirely up to you. I'm just telling you what I do and uh, I've never had a problem with my pre-washed greens. So I look at them very carefully. I make sure that they are not starting to turn yellow, that they do not have too much moisture because if they have a lot of moisture, then I know they will not last for seven weeks. They need to be dry. Sometimes the package looks like maybe it got a little warm and so it created condensation inside and the greens will be wet. So occasionally that's the only thing that you can get. Then I would go ahead and bring them home, but I lay them out on a kitchen towel then and I roll up that kitchen towel to absorb the ex excess moisture. I want everything to be as dry as possible before I put it in these salad containers. And then I also look at the date the expiration date because I need that expiration date to be at least seven days out. And this morning, a couple items didn't have that, but a really nice clerk at Walmart in the produce department went back in the refrigeration um, storage area and brought me out um, items that had a better date. Because I told her I only shop for my salads once a week and I really need these to last. And she's like, oh honey, I can help you. And so that was Debbie. Debbie at Walmart, thank you. I appreciate your excellent service. So, and then also their organic broccoli slaw is so much better than what I was getting at Trader Joe's or at my Whole Foods store. So um, it's just, it lasts the whole time and it does great. And lately the arugula has been terrible at the stores other than Walmart. So the arugula at Trader Joe's has been really wet and goes bad quickly. And um, they quit carrying it in big containers at my Whole Foods. They have small containers and it's like a dollar a container cheaper at Walmart. So, and we live close to a Walmart. So since you guys suggested that we try shopping at Walmart and let you know how it goes, we've been shopping there quite a bit to get our salads. So that is the timer on my Breville. So in my Breville, I always start my potatoes first. So I have baked potatoes in there. I'm actually gonna go over and pull out the Yukon Golds because I need to bake the sweet potatoes a little bit longer. So we're just gonna do that. And I bake them at 400 degrees and I do the Yukon Golds for about an hour. And I like to do my sweet potatoes for about an hour and 15 to 20 minutes, depending. Now, these are really big ones. And so those are definitely going to need that extra time. So I'm going to start it again. And I'm going to do, I think, an extra 20 minutes here. And I'm going to move these potatoes because I want those to start cooling down. And so we'll just move those aside. Once the potatoes are cool, I will store them in containers and I will um, set them so they're sitting upright rather than laying down and you know having the ones on the bottom be squished from the weight of the ones on top and i'll put them in the refrigerator not covered because if i cover them then that creates a lot of moisture it's just telling me it's up to temperature it creates a lot of moisture and that will make the potatoes get soggy and they just won't last as long so uh, we already have some sweet potatoes and some Yukon Golds that I steamed a couple days ago. And so I'm not cooking up a lot of potatoes. Tom's been eating a lot of rice lately and um, less potatoes. And so uh, I, didn't, I didn't do a lot of potatoes today. So, but the, and those, I can do a lot of different things with those. We can make fries out of the Yukon Gold potatoes. We can just cut them in half and air fry them. 
if we want. They can be a side dish to a, a veggie burger. We can also do that with the sweet potatoes. And I can make a lot of desserts with the sweet potatoes too. The grandkids come over, they love my chocolate fudge ice cream and I make it in the Ninja Creamy for them. Or you can use that same recipe and put it in um, popsicle molds and freeze it. And then you have the most amazing, delicious and nutritious chocolate fudge sickles. And they are amazing. So, oh, thank you guys so much for coming back. Liz says, I totally agree, Tammy. Walmart has really stepped up their organic produce uh, game. Thanks for that tip about uh, sweet potatoes. Absolutely. And um, those really big potatoes, you can cut those in half and turn them cut side down on your silpat mat or on your parchment paper and bake them and that will reduce the amount of time that they have to um, bake but I was trying to get everything on one tray in there and if you notice I am not using the wire rack I actually used the air fryer rack but I lined my air fryer rack with a silpat mat because I can get more potatoes on that than if I use a small 15 by 10 jelly roll pan that will fit in there. So use your air fryer rack, but just line it with a silpat mat, or you could line it with um, parchment paper, but parchment paper can still, um, you know, unless it's folded up, you could still have some leakage. And I'm all about not getting my oven dirty because I don't want to have to clean it. So, so anyway, I always get that going. If I, um, if I needed to make grains, I would start my grains before I start doing this stuff because once I get going, um, get things going either in an instant pot or in my oven, then, then it's hands free from there. Um, except for, you know, just having to pull the potatoes out. And I would have had these salads already done if we hadn't been, um, talk, if I hadn't been trying to video record and talk to you all. Tom, the other rack for the Breville is in the, um, is in the dining room. Could you grab it for me? Cause I just want to show them, um, something about that. Okay. Pretty please, pretty can please. I, uh, can I get your picture though? I need you picture can. For the thumbnail. Thumbnail picture. I'm upstairs work. Yeah, that was all talking the description when I pushed the A temp because I just pushed the go button. Yeah. And it grabbed that old, like Chipotle sauce. I know, what was that? Place. It was an old video uh, data that was in there. there I go. tried to tell you. Okay. Oh, I, I need a bigger smile. And there's a, a bright spot in your glasses I got to get rid of. There it is. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, this is this is what goes on in our kitchen all the time, you guys. <laughs> pictures, video. I know pictures, video, um, all kinds of things. That was Tom needing to get a thumbnail picture for this uh, video. So this is the air fryer rack for the Breville, and um, so if you if you line it with a silpat mat. Uh, then you can get a whole lot more potatoes in this, Brussels sprouts, etc. Because the jelly roll pan is um, considerably smaller. You can, can you hand me the jelly roll pan right back there? Um, that way I'm not leaving the screen and leaving them okay. without I, I me. I am listening, so if you need something, okay. let me know. Okay, you're listening upstairs. Yeah. Okay, so um, I just use containers like this to store the potatoes in and I have some bigger ones that I use. I'll use ones the size of the salad containers if, um, if I make a lot of potatoes, but since I'm doing a small amount, then I'll just use these containers and again, I'll store them in the fridge without a lid on them. So um, we'll set those aside. And then what I wanted to um, show you is this is a jelly roll pan and I believe this is 10 let's say on this side, maybe 10 by 15. And this fits on the wire rack that fits in the Breville, but you see it doesn't have as much real estate as the air fryer rack. And that's why if I'm going to use the, air, the Breville for baking potatoes or Brussels sprouts or something like that, then I'll use this because I can squeeze more potatoes on there. So that works really, really well. And we have the, um, the extra racks and the jelly roll pan and stuff on our um, Amazon page.
page. So let me just step aside to get those. So anyway, did I tell you, I can't remember now what I said in the first video versus this one, but um, the salad ingredients cost me $45 and 22 cents this morning. And this is about half of what we eat for the week because we both eat two meals a day and we eat lunch and dinner. And so a big, beautiful chopped salad is one of our meals um, every day. And we do add potatoes, rice, beans, corn, edamame, fruit, um, flax, chia, all different kinds of things. So if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm posting pictures of my salads a lot. And then I also um, do some reels where I show you my salad and tell you what's in it. And I have a whole class online for beautiful chopped salads where I show you how to batch prep them and chop them and how to make delicious toppings for them. And um, that way you never get bored with it. So I'm just cutting up red cabbage now because we put red cabbage in our salads too. Somebody asked me one time, you know, why do you put them in individual containers? I used to put them in, I have like a 22 quart stainless steel bowl and I used to put everything in that and mix it up and then I would weigh each salad out from that and that big 22 quart bowl would not fit in my refrigerator and so um, and I just want to make them once a week and be done with it so we make them and um, divide them up and this way we can just grab one from the fridge if we're going to go to our daughter's house to watch the grandkids then we can um, grab one of these we can chop it before we go or we have given her a bowl and so she has a holland wood bowl at her house as well with a mezzaluna knife and so we can chop our salad there we can chop it we can put it back in here pop it in our little lunch coolers and we can take it with us a lot of people take their chopped salad to work with them i even have i have one friend who has a holland wood bowl and a mezzaluna knife at her office and so she just takes her salad with her and she actually chops it um, at work so that can work too so we love the red cabbage it adds a lot of crunch and color and um, has lots of nutrients the more dense um, the pigment is of our vegetables the um, more nutrition you're going to get from them. I feel like this one's being a little stingy. I'm gonna give it a little extra there and maybe that one too. Tom likes a lot of red cabbage in his salad. So, and I've already washed this and I do take out um, quite a bit of the core just because it does, the core doesn't have that much flavor to it in my opinion. So we'll just do this. And I've already washed the tomatoes. So when we get home, I wash those tomatoes and then I lay them out on a kitchen towel so they can dry. And then if they're not completely dry, when I'm ready to use them, then I'll just take the t another towel and rub it over the top of them and make sure that I've gotten them dry. So now we can put this here. And then I usually have red cabbage left over and Tom will um, put that in his dump soup. Um, he likes that in his dump soup. So that works out good. And I'm just gonna add some extras to what's here. Cause remember, we're gonna chop this up later. So you don't have to use shredded carrots. You could, you know, buy baby carrots. You could use big carrots and cut them because you're going to, you know, if you're us, you're going to end up chopping them. And so um, they don't have to be shredded. I just like that the shredded, they're already washed and peeled and I don't, I just don't have to deal with them because I'm all about saving time. So, you know, my motto, work smarter, not harder in the kitchen. Then we like red onion in it as well and you guys these ingredients are just an idea you don't have to make these exactly like i do it's just to give you an idea of what the possibilities are because maybe this is different than how you make them so i have 
I have kale in here that is already washed and cut that I buy pre-washed. And then I have arugula and baby spinach, broccoli slaw, uh, shredded carrots, red cabbage, red onion, and then we're also going to add tomatoes to it. So, uh, and the tomatoes do not seem to get mealy. I know that's always a question people have as well, but these little tomatoes do not get mealy. They're in the refrigerator, but they do just fine. And so that's what works for us. If you have any questions, you can feel free to um, ask me questions. Just put like three question marks and then your question and end with three question marks. That'll just help it pop out at me since Tom isn't here to um, help right now. But when he comes back, he can look at the comments for me as well. It's a little piece of onion. We're going to give it to that one there. So we've been eating a salad every day as one of our main meals since we went plant-based in 2013. And it was a concept that I learned from Dr. Joel Furman. His Eat to Live book was the first book that I read, and then I saw him do a PBS special on, uh, it was his Eat to Live program that he was doing on there, and um, he said, you know, remember that salad is the main meal, and so we've been doing that all these years, and we have never gotten tired of it. So it's evolved. At first, it was not a chopped salad, so now I'm going to do my tomatoes. I usually do like six. Somebody laughed one time. They looked at my picture and they counted and they were like, oh, you do the exact same amount. I, I just said that when you get here that you would help moderate the comments. Um, Gina oh. says, uh, just joined. You put all this in a bowl and chop again. I do and I'll, t I'll talk about that after I get these um, done. I will talk to you about that. And we do. And we like chopped salads. It just makes them taste so much better. So when we first started, we were not eating a chopped salad, and I was getting all of the ingredients out every day, and I was making salads for us every day. And I thought, there has got to be an easier way to do this. And then I was in um, Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss program that she had way back when. It, she no longer has that program. And um, one of the gals... Uh, BJ, who was in that program, she was batch prepping her salads, but she was putting them in quart jars. And so I thought, oh, what a great idea to make, to mix everything up ahead of time for the week. What a great idea. But the quart jars weren't big enough for the size of salads that we were eating. And so that's how I started doing the containers. And then um, AJ showed one time making a chopped salad on one of her weight loss Wednesdays. If you remember way back when uh, she was doing that and I thought, oh, a chopped salad, that looks interesting. And so I had never had a chopped salad before and then we tried it and loved it. And the rest, as they say, is history because then I just took off with that idea of chopped salads. And I started making what we call beautiful chopped salads. And, um, and then I created an entire course called Beautiful Chopped Salads with uh, videos and a recipe ebook because people were asking me all the time about our salads and how we make them and don't you ever get tired of them. There are so many different ways that you can enjoy these salads. There is no reason to get tired of your salad. You can make Mexican and Mediterranean and you know, you can um, have Italian, you can make it taste like pizza. You can do so many different things with it. Oh, you're gonna help me? Thank you. And they're so delicious. So um, Tom doesn't put them in a line. Oh, he's laughing at me because um, I like them. I like them to go in a line. 
Oh, let's give that guy. Let's do give you him. You only gave me you didn't I know. Me. I didn't give you enough. I need three more. Yeah. And then we have extra tomatoes. So what I like to do with the extra tomatoes, I do just keep these out on the countertop. And then um, when I'm making my salad, if I want more tomato, like if I do a Mexican chopped salad, then I will add more tomatoes to it. Or we can use them as garnish on other things. Some, some, sometimes, sometimes my brain goes faster than my mouth can get the words out. Sometimes Tom likes to add them to his dump soup as well. And then we put the lids on and we put them in our fridge. Now, everybody wants to know what size are these containers. These are nine cup containers and they are Ziploc and Ziploc no, no longer makes these exact containers so you do have to you know get the make sure you get the food the um, lettuce all down in there but they do make they make a shorter container that has um, that's deeper and so but your salads might not be as big as ours are, are and so you might not need this big of a container some people say that they put them in a gallon size uh, Ziploc bag instead of a container because they don't have enough room in their refrigerator to accommodate these containers. And just make sure you get all the lids down on them. And what you have to do is you have to figure out what, with your refrigerator, what is the best configuration to be able to get them all in your refrigerator. Are you and so I am, I'm gonna show you. So, cause somebody the other day I posted about the batch prep salads and somebody said, well, who has a refrigerator big enough to hold all of those? I will admit that we have a very large refrigerator. It's 28 cubic feet. It is, it's deep. So you can see that it comes out past the countertop here. And so, and we bought it on purpose because we got it after we had gone whole food plant-based and we recognized the fact that we needed a lot of refrigeration. We also do have another refrigerator in our garage, which is very helpful and it's the same size as this one. So when we come home from the grocery store, stuff goes in that refrigerator, all the bulk stuff goes in the refrigerator in the garage, and then we try to keep mostly prepped food in this one. So, so this is our designated space for salads. So, and you can, remember that you can adjust your shelves in your refrigerator to accommodate whatever configuration that you need for those. So three of those go back there. And then I do another, another three. And for some reason, these have to go upside down in order to fit. So they interlace with the lids of the others. Yes. And I have, I added this wire rack here to the refrigerator so that I could utilize more of the space here because the potatoes that we have cooked go underneath here and remember they don't have lids on them and so um, I can't stack anything on top of them. So I just got a wire rack, it's white, it looks nice and then these get in here like that and then I do another three go here and so this gives me um, nine in there and then we'll do three here and one will go this way. See, I've really done this a lot, you guys, to figure this out. And then the other one will go here. Voila! They all fit. There's lunch for the rest of the week done. Yay. Makes me so happy. Okay. So the potatoes are done. Let me, I'm going to grab a fork just to make sure because those one sweet potatoes are really big and I just want to make sure. Oh yeah. They're oozy 
Uzi, everybody's done. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to take those out. And I'm going to let those cool down before I do anything with them. I don't want to put them in the containers while they're hot because that will just create a lot of moisture in there. And so I'm going to set them up here. I'm going to get a little rack to put them on so they can cool down. Sorry for the noise. And I'm just going to let those cool down. I'll put them there. And then um, they'll go in the refrigerator when they're cool enough to pop in there. I am going to, um, I'm going to give you the leftover onion and the cabbage. And you can put those in containers if you would. Okay. And I'm going to grab some tempeh because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, bake some barbecue tempeh. I'm going to move my rack, put it in the higher position. I am going to do 400, but I'm going to do about 30 minutes. So, so this is some tempeh, and this is, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's cultured organic soybeans, some lactic acid, and some brown rice. And so um, it's really healthy, delicious. I just buy it. I can get this at the regular grocery store. Um, Trader Joe's has one. If you're gluten-free, you just have to look at the back of the package and see what grain they have used with it because not all of them are gluten-free. But this one does happen to be um, gluten-free. So it's really delicious. It has a lot of texture to it. It ha has a lot of moisture, uh, moisture. It has a lot of texture to it. It's very filling. Um, and I, l I love it because it's a little bit chewy. And so it's really good. Really, really good. Let's see. I think I'm going to need my scissors for this. So a lot of different things that you can do with tempeh. Um, oh, it's ready already. So depending on what I'm doing with it, sometimes you'll want to steam it first because it's very dense. And if you steam it, then if you want to, you know, use a marinade on it, then that will help it kind of open up and it will help the marinade. You're making a lot of noise over there, friend. <laughs> You're done. Um, okay, so um, this is Date Lady barbecue sauce. And I just buy this from Amazon. You can also go to the Date Lady website and buy it directly from her. We have it in our Amazon um, affiliate page. So amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook. And I really like it. It is um, dates, ground tomatoes. It does have some salt in it. A tablespoon has 36 milligrams of salt. We're fine having a little bit of sodium in our condiments. It has apple cider vinegar, garlic powder, wood smoked paprika, onion powder, ancho chili powder, wood smoked um, sea salt, cumin, dried oregano, and black pepper. And it is the bomb. It's so delicious. So then what I like to do is, I just want to make sure I'm not blocking the view here. Then I just, I like to you cut this. Know. You're fine. Okay. You're so fine. I cut it in half and then each half. I cut again and you can you know cut this whatever size that you want but I just kind of half half and then I, I like to be able to have quite a few little slices um, I like to put this on my salads and so but you can cube it they do make uh, bacon 
out of it as well. So, you know, you can use some different spices and some liquid smoke and kind of make like a, a fake bacon with it as well. I have this upside down because um, I need to get another bottle. And so I was just trying to get it so it would run the way I want it to run. Put it in here. Oh, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it right away, honey. Thank you. So I don't really measure how much. You can use like maybe four tablespoons or so is plenty for me. If, oops, if it doesn't have, I get to lick it, right? Mmm, so good. So, um, not professional at all. But I'm a home cook. It's okay. And I'm the one that's going to eat it. Um, Tom doesn't usually eat it. He lets me have it. He likes other things better, I guess. So um, I just stir it up. If you wanted to, you could add, you know, more ingredients. You could use like some um, ketchup, natural ketchup and mustard. You can make uh, something with, if you use soy sauce, I don't, but I use coconut aminos. So you could use coconut aminos and balsamic vinegar and a little bit of maple syrup or date syrup and that would be really tasty on it i've done that as well but this barbecue is like my favorite it's just so good what am i doing it's so good so we'll just put that lid back on obviously i need to order some more of that today and i'm just gonna dry my hands off Caroline says, do you have a special plan or formula for your evening meal after the wonderful salad? How do you decide to eat? Uh, well, how do you decide what to eat later? You know, it just depends. It depends on how hungry we are, um, what we're doing. So we have lots of different things to choose from, from for dinner. Whenever I make a soup, um, I either make a full like six or eight quart pot of it in the instant pot or if it's a smaller recipe I double it and then we freeze it so I'm all about batch cooking so I like to double recipes I get twice as much food but I only have to do the dishes once so here's what the barbecue tempeh looks like so you can see it's just nicely coated not too much but just enough and then I have my little baking tray here and I love using my Breville smart oven air it's a toaster oven slash air fryer and it's so great for these little jobs especially here in California where it gets hot in the summer and I don't want to run my oven in the summertime if I'm going to run my oven in the summertime I'll do it early in the morning so that it doesn't heat up my kitchen so that my you know so much so that my air conditioner doesn't have to run extra. Belinda knows once no she's late. She's late. <laughs> Are you late? We're here, we're here. She doesn't um, they can't hear me. Vivian says, don't they sell date lady products at Walmart? They sell at our Walmart they only sell two things. They sell the date syrup and they sell the date sugar. But they don't have the um, barbecue sauce or the sweet chili sauce and I like the sweet chili sauce too so if you're gonna go on Amazon to order it or date lady you can go direct to date lady get both so then I just like to spread them out so that they'll get kind of toasty and how long you want to cook them is up to you I'm gonna do like 30 minutes I probably um, check on them at about 20 just to make sure they're not burning because um, they can burn as well so there we go and these are just going to go in the oven and we'll check on them okay I'll, i'm setting it for 25 we'll check it at 25 okay um oh it went blank for a second why why did it do that okay let's see um, Gina says just joined you do you put all this in a bowl and chop again um, I will show you in a minute what I do with those salads and yeah I do chop them so um, let's 
see. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. So, um, so that is it for those two things. And um, let me grab a bowl to show you. what we do, I'll talk to you about what we do with our salads. So when we go to have our salad, you could have it just like it is. And you know, you could just, you could um, cut that red cabbage and the red onion up with a knife and you could cut the tomatoes in half if you wanted to. And then you could just put, you know, whatever, you've got to have something on them carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, so that it's satiating because that salad itself, it weighs maybe between 12 and 15 ounces uh, or 12 and 16 ounces. And those raw veggies are about 100 calories a pound. So that whole container is probably around 100 calories packed with nutrition, tons of fiber and water and those dark leafy greens are so good for you, but it's not going to be satiating. So you've got to add some things to it. You have to have, you know, beans or grains or beans and grains. Potatoes would be fantastic. Uh, we like to add some fruit to ours as well. Tom likes edamame and corn and rice, and um, he likes a little bit of sauerkraut mixed in. We usually do pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, or flax in them. It's a really great way to get those omega-3s in. Uh, I'm, you know, not fond of just like chugging those. Some people do, but um, just putting them in my salad, I don't even know that they're in there and you get that extra fiber from them as well. So we like to chop the salad. The reason we like to chop it is one, it reduces the overall volume of it. So it takes it from that great big salad and makes it, you know, knocks it down to something that's a little bit smaller and more manageable. And if you're taking it to work or eating it in front of other people, then, you know, it makes it a, what looks like a more reasonable size because people will say, I can't believe you eat all of that. You know, when I show my beautiful chopped salads, people always say, how many people does that serve? I'm like, one, it just serves me. Um, so it reduces the overall volume of it. It makes it easier to chew. You are still going to have to chew a lot because there's so much fiber in that salad. So we chop it, we'll take it, we'll dump it in our bowl and we will chop it with a mezzaluna knife. There's other ways you can do it. You can also put it on a big cutting board and use a knife. You have to do a little bit at a time. It's harder to contain it, but it's quite doable to do that. And then um, OXO um, brand has a, a salad chopping bowl as well, but it won't hold the whole salad. It'll hold about half of our salad and it comes with a rotary um, chopper that um, I did originally have that but I wasn't super fond of it and so then I switched to um, a wood bowl these are made from the Holland Bowl Company in Holland Michigan and um, with a mezzaluna knife and so we just chop it in there I would chop that but um, well, I guess we could chop your salad. We could pre-chop your salad. I'm having salad. my salad for dinner tonight. Yeah, he's going to have his for dinner tonight. So we could pre-chop um, Tom's salad in it. Should I do that and show sure. him? Do you mind? Yeah. Oh, it's no. 4 o'clock. It's close enough. Okay, yeah. so we have his and her bowls, you guys. Yeah, I heard you talking about... Um, I'm mic'd up now. Oh, you're mic'd up? Come yeah. on over and join so me. So I got... I don't know how... Yeah, I should be on. Um, I got the thumbnail for the walk and talk done. And, okay. the, and then I put some kind of picture on this too that showed you with the salads because I took the picture, remember? So anyway, and, and yeah, that other thumbnail was just some 
random. I told random you. Random thing from a half a I year know, ago. See? Until what was that? I don't know. It the was internet crazy. is being weird. So Tia wants to know what Breville setting and temperature do you use for the barbecue? Tempeh looks yummy. Thank you. Uh, I just put it on bake 400 degrees and then I'm going to check it at 25 minutes and see. And you know, you can use more or less barbecue sauce. Also, Well Your World has a nice barbecue sauce that is salt, oil, and sugar free. Do I have one? I don't have one open right now, um, but they also have a tomato ketchup. You could do ketchup and mustard together or ketchup and some balsamic vinegar together would also be good. If you like it hot, uh, Well Your World has this sriracha that is delicious. And so you could spice it up with that as well. And it's SOS free. And shall I grab your salad? Yeah, grab a salad. You know, she was talking to you that she likes to put the tempeh on her salad. She makes those little cubes and barbecues them or whatever she's doing in the in the Breville over there. And I prefer to load mine up with, with black beans, uh, using half a can of black beans, which I guess technically would be six ounces. Are those, are those cans 12, 12 ounce cans? Of They're 15, I think, 15 ounce. Exactly and precisely seven. 15.5. Exactly and precisely seven and a half ounces of black beans rinsed. And then I throw in corn and um, and some peas just because I can. Oh yeah, peas, and, corn, edamame. And it's edamame, shelled edamame, because those are like a special treat. Uh, sunflower, sunflower seeds. seeds as well. Pumpkin seeds. And pumpkin seeds because those are good for your brain. You, you don't have to prompt me, everyone. I can. My brain's still working. Oh, I know, but I just I would I'm trying to think of because you put so much in your salad. I load mine up. It's a cornucopia of yeah. But the thing is, though, is that I so look forward to this meal. Um, yes. I do tend to do dump soup at lunch or something else. I tend to do my salads at nighttime because uh, we make these up and. You know, our kids are grown, so we're not having family dinner at night. So we, we're naughty. We take our meal up and we pick out a favorite uh, show that we're watching. And then we just sit there and graze on. I sit there and graze on that salad. Because it, it takes 40 minutes at least to eat. Yeah. So um, another thing that I like to do when I make a Mexican chopped salad is these are just plantains. I let them get really ripe. Um, where I just bought plantains. What did I do? Oh, can you grab? I think they're over there. I just bought plantains at Walmart, and they're like fifty-nine cents a piece, I think. And so you got big bananas and medium-sized plantains. Yeah, and so these are plantains. They look a lot like a banana, but they're much starchier. And um, I I wait until they get mostly black, and that's when they're very ripe. And that's when I peel them, I cut them in half, and then I will just put them on a nonstick um, griddle pan or pancake pan or a nonstick uh, frying pan, and I just brown them. No oil, just dry pan. And these are delicious. And our grandkids absolutely yeah, love away. these. They're so good. So, um, but I like that on my Mexican chopped salad. So. Um, I think I'll I'll do your. Are you going to do your salad or am I doing your salad? Do you want to do it or you want me to do it? You can go ahead and start, and then maybe I'll take it away and finish if you want to keep. You know. Okay, I've got sauce on me. Except okay, I, so I've got somebody... to, Let me cut some basil. I want basil in it. I okay, fresh basil. I think you should do it. Okay, well let me get yeah, my ingredients. You're... Okay, so Tom. Where's the scissors? We grow um, basil in our arrow garden, and it sits behind our kitchen sink, and. Um, Tom loves to put fresh basil in his every day, and so... Is that a horrible scene to show right oh, now? Oh, go ahead. It's messy because we're... We're cooking. This is the real deal. We're cooking right now. Oh, my goodness. Okay, there's the basil. It's really washed out over... Oh, here, I can do this. Oh. That's the basil bush. It grows there year-round. <laughs> and it's always about that tall. I have to keep trimming the top of it, keep giving it haircuts, or it gets away. So it lasts... The basil plants... Um, last about like 120 days and yeah. then we replace them and so they're hydroponic that is well, this one's at 118 it's got it's another a, oh, it 20 can, days it'll, it it'll go 150 going. yeah so we can make some um, pesto out of it you know if you do anything Italian it's delicious on it we like it in our spring rolls our fresh spring rolls there's so much you can do with the fresh basil. So we ha we grow that in the house and then we have an herb garden outside and we're able to grow herbs all year long here in 
Northern California. So um, somebody asked about the Date Lady sweet chili sauce. I love that to um, put over, like if I make like a stir fry, you can put that over a stir fry. You can take and mix some of it with peanut butter or the peanut butter powder that doesn't have salt or sugar in it and uh, some coconut aminos and you can make a really nice dip that you can use for the fresh spring rolls. So, um, you know, so think, you know, Asian um, food. So you, I think you should do it because this is gonna be your salad. And so what we do is we chop it in our bowls. And we used to have just one bowl, but then we got two bowls because we wanted to make salads at the same time. And so oh, that smells so amazing. Is wow. Right? This is my basil. I know, this it smells so good. Well, I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna make the penne pasta dish um, oh, to take you, tomorrow. Are you gonna annihilate our basil dish? I probably am. Oh, no. And I think I'm gonna make some pesto as well so it smells amazing so what we usually do is we usually do cut our tomatoes first so should i go over there and and, and raise, raise the it camera? up and, yeah well okay. let me do a preliminary um g girl says are you still doing a morning smoothie no i was just doing some smoothies when we first got back from um, our cruise because i was having some um some health issues at that time. And so the green smoothie was really nice for then, for then. but um, I'm not doing that now because I'm back to not having breakfast. And, um, but sometimes we will have a smoothie for dinner. If Tom has his salad at lunch um, with me, then sometimes for dinner, we're not that hungry because our salad is so filling that we will do a smoothie. Sometimes we'll do a soup. Sometimes I just do a plate of fruit. It just depends. Sometimes I'm hungry. Um, because I've been super physical that day and sometimes I want, you know, a veggie burger and some potatoes or something. So, so it changes. So what I've done is I've okay, just pre-cut. Okay, wait, I've got to make sure I've, I've got your head's yeah, not cut off. Yeah, it is right now. I've okay. pre-cut the tomatoes so that when you start chopping, so they don't explode on you. Oh, I missed one. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands because i got that yeah. barbecue sauce on So me. yeah, on the iPad, my head is cut off. Did you move it up a bit? I did. It takes, you know, it's a... A delay. Okay, so there's a delay. I like to add so the kale. So you're not cut off now. And all that, or the uh, dump. I just dumped the whole bin in there from our batch prep. And then I like to add some. Oh, here's some random cabbage. I want to add some super greens. Where's that bag of super greens we had? It's in your the down um, below. Yeah. I'll be your assistant now. Okay. And then I'm gonna want. Uh, oh man. I'm this celery isn't gonna, can you grab the celery out of the uh, garage fridge? Sure. That's not gonna be enough celery. And then I've got a cucumber in here. That yeah, someone should be new. So, I don't know if Tammy mentioned it, but we don't put in wet things, like the cucumbers are really wet, and we don't cut this and put it in the batch prep salads. So we wait and put it in right before. And then I cut celery separate because, um, she doesn't add the celery to hers necessarily. And then I always add a couple of handfuls of super greens just just to, you know, she used to make these bigger. Uh, she cut them uh, like 16 ounces weight and then she cut them down to 13 ounces. So I'm just getting my three ounces back of, of mixed super greens. How many um, pieces of celery do you want, honey? I'll go ahead and rinse them. Um, two of those, maybe, no, three. It three. depends on how big the stocks are. If they're little stocks, I use three. If they're really big stocks, I use two. Well, I'll show you. I think you're going to want three. Okay. They don't look huge. I worked really hard today, so I wouldn't <laughs> mind a big meal. I know. Yeah, I'll use three of those for okay. sure. I'm going to go ahead and rinse so. those. Okay, so I got the super greens. Oh, and I've been adding, do we still have that old arugula used up? That there was a bin of arugula I was working on from last week. Oh, let me look. It'd be right here. Um, kind of in the same theme as, oh, spring mix. There's spring mix in there. Yeah. You can have that. Okay, so what I need to tell you is that I used to make our salads bigger but I've gotten to a point where they're um, too filling for me. And so I cut back on the size of them, but 
Tom still likes them big. So he adds things. Do you want me to get out the nuts for you? Yeah, that, that tray with my, um, and I think I'm going to probably need a sauerkraut from the garage. I think I used, I'll go the, get it. I used the last one up. Okay. So we keep a bin in the fridge that we can just pull out. Yeah. No, I'm aware I've got one hand in here and I'm chopping. <laughs> this is my left hand. This is my right hand. And the left hand so far has stayed out of the way of the chopper in the right hand. So we did a demo a few weeks back and, and I, I was getting some cautionary comments. Tammy's pesto recipe. Stephanie will ask her when she gets back in here. So this seems to take a while at first, but we've timed it and it's roughly three minutes. I do chop mine, I think, a little bit finer than Tammy does hers. Do you, do you, uh, is there a recipe for the pesto sauce uh, on the, there on the is. blog? There is. Yes. yes. Uh, best search term for it on Google or on YouTube search? Nutmeg notebook. Pesto. Pesto. Yeah, just search nutmeg notebook pesto. It's no oil. Yeah, a no oil version for sure. So. The point of chopping this is really just to make it easier to eat, to chew, and to have it mix with the other ingredients. And then, get, and then you get all these unique little flavor explosions as you go. So, you know, I guess you could say that it's easier. Uh, um, it, it, you, it could be easier to throw it all in a, a blender or a food processor but then you'd wind up with a smoothier mush. And I want those each individual um, um, bites uh, to, to enjoy as I go. I, I don't want to down the thing um, quickly like a smoothie, you know, because we do make our fruit and veggie smoothies, mm -hmm. load them up with, with strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, arugula. lots lots of spinach, a cup of, a cup of arugula, two cups of spinach. They're, they're delicious, they're huge, they feel like a quart jar. Um, but, and, and, and they're very nutritious, but they are not as satiating as getting to graze on one of these salads for a half an hour or more. Okay, that's probably enough chopping, so. I could get lost in the chopping and just keep chopping. So I kind of have this effect in the end. Still nice and fluffy. It's therapeutic though, isn't it, to do that chopping? Oh, what I like that is uh, slicing the, uh, the, the cucumber yeah. and the celery. So um, the cutting board's not on screen. Can you drop the camera down, Tammy? Sure. Um, yeah, drop, drop it down so that the cutting board's getting know, picked up here. I'm just trying to not cut your head you're off. Gonna, you're going to have to cut my head off a bit. No, you can, we can see it. Okay, so these big ones, I cut in thirds the long way, and be mindful of your thumb. <laughs> this is not something you want to rush to do and sacrifice a finger. Then this smaller one, I'm only cutting in half the long way. And then this one's in between, so I'm going to cut it twice. Because these little celery bits, when you encounter them on a fork load, are absolutely little flavor explosions. Cut this this way, double stack, line them up. Now when it comes to slicing and dicing, I am no Dylan Holmes. Um, I do the best I can. I've got my little Nakano. This is my knife. Tammy has her own knife. This one's mine. Oops, I the thing. I like the handle of this one. It's amazing how personal kitchen utensils can be. Right? It's true. Okay. 
Yeah, I got this knife because it was a, uh, it's a good quality knife made in Japan. Um, and it doesn't cost half a fortune. Like what they, I mean, Tammy's knife is awesome. We bought it years and years and years ago, which is kind of a testimony to the price because it's lasted for a couple of decades now and it's like new. Um, and, um, and this one costs less than half as much as that one, but it's a high quality knife out of Japan. It's on our Amazon page under utensils, I think. I think I added it there. I like I the handle so. shape, the way the handle fits. Yeah. Okay, now, celery, or not celery. I'm done with this celery. Uh, cucumber, and this is where my eyes are bigger than my tummy sometimes. So Tammy's encouraged me to cut off about that much. I used to cut off a three inch piece, so I'm trying to get it down to two and a half or two. Okay, so, um Tia says, we use a lot of the Well Your World products. We do as well. And Jacqueline wants to know, do you have a link to the wood salad bowls? Oh, well, Tammy's, you haven't talked about that yet? No, not yet. Okay, should we start that conversation now? We should. Now? I said in the show title that we have an announcement today. Those of you that watch our morning You're locking You're not cut times, off. You can stand up. Oh. I did not cut your head off. And you have the cutting board still on here? Wow. Yeah, see? I'm, um, I'm a genius. Those of you that were on our walk and talk this morning have already heard this. But those of you that are joining us this afternoon, tonight, you're going to hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> the Holland Bowl Mail Perfectly Imperfect Nutmeg Notebook Exclusive Chopping Bowl and More Sale begins this coming Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. We are going to be going live at 9 a.m. Pacific. We will be releasing an email at 9 a.m. on Tuesday Pacific time with the special link to the special landing page for the perfectly imperfect Holland Bull Mill sale. It's not the usual hollandbullmill.com forward slash nutmeg. That's our usual, you know, Tammy's favorites landing page for, for, the, for the bull mill. Um, they have built uh, a, a unique landing page for the sale, and they have uh, acquired, they've been saving up inventory for the entire year since this time last year to get ready for this year's sale. And, and Tammy, I'm going to slice some dice. If you can talk to them about how this, the bowls are selected, how they oh, order, sure. you know, the size but not the wood. Okay, I'm going to go ahead those and things. pull my um, yeah. tempeh. Okay, well, while she's doing that, um, I'm going to try and see, and doing two, doing two things, uh, talking and, 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 and dicing at the same time, maybe it's not the best idea for me. <laughs> it uh, isn't exactly yeah, easy to yeah, do. You're either, shopping for bowl size. In the perfectly imperfect bowl sale, you're indicating what size of bowl you want. They're putting dip, deep discounts on the bowls. There will be... Okay, you know, well, first, what's an imperfect bowl? So yeah, you go ahead. Um, an imperfect bowl will be a bowl that has some kind of imperfection on it, but it will not um, keep the bowl from being functional. You will still have a lifetime warranty on the Holland Wood Bowl, but um, it will have. It might have like a knot someplace. It might have a different discoloration on it. it there might be just a little bit of um, bark left someplace. So it's a bowl that once they cut it out of the tree, then they saw the tree trunk, then they saw that it had an imperfection. So they can't sell it as a perfect bowl, but they can sell it as an imperfect bowl. But they know that we are using them to chop our salads in. So they make sure that the integrity of the inside of the bowl is completely intact and still perfect for chopping salads and they still have a lifetime guarantee but they will be drastically um, reduced in price and so i gotta go get a can of beans okay and so um and this is i think this is our fourth year um i'll have to ask corey so corey from holland bowl mill is going to be on with us he'll come we'll come on at nine o'clock 
on Tuesday morning and he'll join us at about 9.15 and he'll show you some samples of the imperfect bowls and I have some samples that I'll show you of the imperfect bowls as well. And then um, you'll, there, the, um, one of the things about the imperfect sale is that you don't necessarily get to choose which wood you get. So they'll have different types of wood but you can put in the comments on the um, checkout page, you know, if possible, I would prefer to have a cherry or I would prefer to have a um, uh, beech wood. You can do that. They'll do their best to accommodate you, but they only have so many of each type of wood and so many of each size. And so, you know, once they run out, they run out. So, and they only do this for the Nutmeg Notebook um, followers every year. It's an exclusive sale through us. So we really appreciate that we do that. We've been having people for a few weeks now contacting us, asking us, when, when, is, it? when is the sale, is the sale coming? So it's the perfect time to get a bowl for you for an anniversary. Mother's Day is coming, wonderful Mother's Day gift for yourself or someone else in your life. Um, that you would like to give a bowl to. It's also great for Father's Day uh, for all those dads who love to eat healthy as well. Um, this is Tom's own bowl. I have my own bowl. We gave our daughter her own bowl. And so um, they, you know, graduation gifts, they're just wonderful for so many different types of gifts. You can get free engraving on the bottom of the bowl as well. So that makes it really fun and special. And um, so the sale will start on Tuesday at 9 a.m. We will go live. And at that point, we will tell you all about the prices and all of the um, particulars about the sale. And like Tom said, we have a special landing page that we have a link to that we'll give you on Tuesday and all of the information will be there. We'll also put it in the, the show notes of the YouTube video on um, Tuesday. And the sale will last as long as they have bowls. We usually sell out within two days. Um, right now we're saying that the sale will go for three days, but... Um, it's lucky to make it through the end of the second day before yeah. the inventories are pretty well wiped out. Yeah. So, and there will be there will be um, three different sizes of bowls. So this is the 15 inch. This is. And we are going to cover the all one. the details on Tuesday. Yes, so. we are. We are. So, so anyway, we'll show you all the different bowl sizes. We'll have a, a representation of the different types of wood. We'll be and showing you some we'll, imperfections. And we'll show you some of the imperfections. But, um, but yeah, so we are super excited because we just accidentally fell into being affiliates with Holland Wood Bowl because years ago I was posting about my chopped salads and people were asking, where did you get your bowl? And at that time, I didn't know about Holland Bowl Mill specifically. And um, so I called them and um, said, you know, um, I have people, I'm a blogger and I have a YouTuber and I have people that want to buy this bowl and, and Corey said, would you like to be an affiliate? And I said, well, how does that help my people get a bowl? And he kind of laughed. And <laughs> that was so, our first, that, that was our first, you know, like we're affiliates now. Oh, didn't know that was nice. We're affiliates now, even with, with, with Tom, Vitamix. What am I doing? I'm making lots I of would, noise. Okay. Well, only over there, not here. So, but yeah, we, we, were, we weren't affiliates of anybody at that point in time. Maybe Amazon, barely, but I'm not yeah. sure. Tia Do said, we know the prices yet? I don't Tom, know. That. Um, we can't tell them. Okay. Uh, Tia said, I got my Holland Bowl during one of the Imperfect Bowl sales using your link. It is really nice and I love it and it was a great deal. And Angela says, do you know how big the discount will be and how quickly they usually sell out? So um, we can't tell you the prices until... They'll be um, published Tuesday morning. They'll be to mm -hmm. published on Tuesday. And so tune in Tuesday yeah. morning. And then... And and this size there will be 15 inch 17 inch and I think the 12 inch yeah and the 15 inch our favorite chopping bowl size usually sells out the uh, first day the first day they do have more inventory this year than last year mm -hmm. so we're hoping to make it into the second day on the 15 inch uh, the 17 the all of the 15s last the last two years 
I can't remember three years ago, but the last two years, all 15s were sold, all 17 inches were sold, and most of the 12 inches sold out. So, um, and the 12 inches did last longer, uh, but some people didn't hear about the sale till late, you know, until the third day, and that's just what was left. Right. There that's was, why we asked Corey this year, could we have permission to talk about it ahead of advance. time to let people know that it's coming? And he said yes. And um, somebody suggested, Cindy said, maybe you should get one of those steel mesh gloves. <laughs> I have one. He does not use it. He does not use it. So, but I have it, and I have suggested that as well so i've never a had a idea. problem cutting salad the only problems i've had have been cutting bread. bread well maybe that's because you're not supposed to be eating it okay so um if you haven't subscribed to nutmeg notebook and you're not on our email list then we highly recommend that you go to nutmegnotebook.com and there will if you're not a subscriber there will be a pop-up to subscribe put your email address in there uh, we don't spam you, but what we do is we send out an email once or twice a week, unless it's bundle week. Yeah, the bundle week then is over, daily. so for this year we're done spamming. Right, yeah. yeah. And so um, sign up, because then at 9 o'clock you will get our email. If it's the first time the that you're link. getting it, yeah. it will probably end up in your junk folder or your spam folder, because we won't be in your contact list. And so look in your junk email or your spam folder. Approve us. And there will also be a link in there to join us on the, the, YouTube, the YouTube live. YouTube live. Or you can just come back to Nutmeg Notebook. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you click that bell icon, that's how you get notifications whenever we either go live or put up um, new content. So do those two things to ensure that you find out about the sale because you'll want to order probably the first day to ensure that you get your choice of size um, because they do, like Tom said, they sell out quickly. All right, go on with your yeah, salad. JK, 9 Pacific on Tuesday morning. Sorry. 9 a.m. Pacific. Yes. Noon, uh, noon Eastern. Eastern. Okay, half a can of black beans. We buy the S&W low sodium organic from Costco uh, if Tammy hasn't made them. Sometimes I'm lucky and she's got a batch, uh, a batch prep of beans going. Um, I tend to want to eat those like in other things though because they're so tasty all by themselves. They, okay, a very precise measurement of sunflower seeds. Uh, a tablespoon and a half. These are kind of like little mini croutons. And we didn't used to do the pumpkin seeds, but we watched a seminar, an online. No, we did it with, we did a program with Sia. Sia, okay. And we learned, and we've heard it though from multiple sources that these are good brain food, pumpkin seeds. They got something, they got something in them. And. Well, the thing about seeds too okay. is we don't like overeat on seeds. You're not going to sit and eat a whole bowl of right. sunflower seeds. They're not like as addictive yeah. as the, um, like sitting down and eating almonds. Right. Okay. Another very, <laughs> this is kind of the antithesis of, of my perfectly granular rice, which is involved on very precise measurements of water and rice ratios. The salad is much more a free form. Uh, a, approximately a handful. a handful of corn. There's no exactly and precisely. I, know, I love this. that. I love that though, don't you? That we don't have to weigh and measure our food. Oh, and some things though I enjoy exactly and precisely. But okay, oh, the, the peas are getting low. So peas are a fun little crouton to have in there, just a handful of those. And my very special treat. Shelled soybeans, edamame. We have to get this from, this is Seapoint Farms. We get these from a, a fancy schmancy market called Nugget here in town. They're the only ones that carry. Oh, and, um, yeah. actually Smart and Final also has those. Oh, but we don't have one close by. Yeah, we do. It's by Trader Joe's. We went in there and bought some oh. a few months back. Okay. Um, you just forgot, because I think we've only gone there once okay. to get them. All right, these are all going back in the freezer. Can you guys believe he's going to eat the whole thing? Would you give me a red flat uh, flat in spatula, my favorite spatula? Is it this one? Yep, that's the one. 
So uh, I like being the assistant. This is fun. So I'm just going to give this, uh, you know, while it's still quote unquote dry, I give it a stir just to get all the ingredients mixed in there. So um, JK says, um, how often do they have the imperfect sale? Once a it's year. It's once a year in and only spring. through Nutmeg Notebook. And so um, that's why you've got to Yeah, our, in. our group, you guys every year, um, they, 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 you know, it's not like they're out, like these bowls happen. They set them aside for us, for you. They do the deep discount to be announced on Tuesday. And all of the inventory that's available every year gets assigned, gets used up by all of you folks. So they've never expanded on it because only because the Nutmeg Notebook group is buys them out enthusiasm and and the purpose for the bowls in the chopped salads uses them all up. So there's no more uh, there's no more market for anybody else. Right. So, so it's it's really just for for this group here. So here's what my finished chopped before I dressed looked. I have to remember to show. And I'm going to want the, uh, I think Get I'll have vinegar. the seven, the seven. Uh, okay, while you do that, I'll say, so we keep this up in the refrigerator because this has um, things that we put in our chopped salads. And that way we can just pull this whole container out. And so we have the pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds. And I have the flax seed here and the jar of um, chia uh, got put mm. elsewhere because I was getting things ready for my salad dressing. I like a little bit of this um, 24 karat gold with turmeric um, fermented uh, it's sauerkraut and carrots. You put that on top though after you're yeah, done. Yeah, I, I only put about uh, two tablespoons of it on top because it does have sodium in it, but it has the probiotics. And like I said, we use condiments that have salt in them and we don't have you know high blood pressure. We don't have any mm -hmm. issues. So um, a little bit of sodium in condiments is not a deal breaker for us. The bottle of vinegar, uh, balsamic vinegar I'm working right now is from California Balsamic Seven Herb Italian Balsamic. We have really every flavor of vinegar that they make. Um, and I just rotate them in and out. Uh, I really love the, the, uh, um, the Gilroy garlic. Uh, Tammy likes the sweet heat. The, the the fresh basil is really uh, my favorite and then this one is right there with it uh, there's a uh, is it a red onion one there's an onion uh, flavored basil and then there's the lemon and the onion one I've used in my salad yeah, as the well. ruby red onion ruby red onion thank you yeah so anyway California balsamic I will put a link to this down in the show notes it's not there right now or you can just go to California balsamics.com forward slash nutmeg and that will take you to our landing page there. Yeah. And so. if they use our affiliate links, we do earn some commission on that. Mm -hmm. And um, that really helps us provide you with all the free content yes. that we provide. Okay, so <laughs> this, this, is, this is reality YouTube, okay? How is this gonna go? Uh, Tam, Tammy, <laughs> Tammy has the white bowl and she or she dresses her salad in here and makes it beautiful, turns it into a work of culinary art. I just want to eat it. <laughs> so, uh, in keeping with my dump philosophy, I dump the salad back into the original container that the, that the unprocessed ingredients came in. And I'm going to fill it. It's going to be full when I'm done. Because all of my random handfuls... Um, uh, chop it back off. Now, you're on, oh my gosh, how's he eating on this? This is like 90% or more water. So I don't feel stuffed or over full or lethargic after this. I feel very satiated and well hydrated. So, so I see it filled it right back up to the top since we chopped it down and then added all those ingredients back in. And then I do have one indulgence on this. I like a couple of tablespoons of, of um, sorry, Tammy, would you hand me a fork? I was just going for that. So as Tammy mentioned, some of our condiments do have sodium and this is a, a probiotic raw organic sauerkraut from, from Costco that we have found and it's very tasty. It does have, you know, it's a, it's a live culture. Um, 
sauerkraut. And if you were to sit here and eat a whole cup of it, you would be getting a boatload of sodium. So we're gonna throw a couple of tablespoons on here because I really, really like the flavor, the flavor enhancement that that does. So we just put some of these guys in here. And then once we get upstairs, I'll stir this in and get those little sauerkraut surprises as we go. So. <laughs> Sauerkraut surprise. Little, well, because it's it's totally a flavor burst. It is. So anyway, and then when I'm all done with this, I tend to go like that, and I stab my fork into it. I don't know why. It's just something I do every night. That's kind of like the conclusion of salad prep. <laughs> and then I don't know if you have noticed I always stick my fork in the salad. Yeah. Okay, and so this whole tray then, kind of. Uh, this, the refrigerator or organizer lady that we interviewed uh, inspired you to use these more. I think you're already using some. I was. But these ingredients are always in this tray, including my sauerkraut. You said, Tammy doesn't use this. I use this. I, I use and, the other one. And so that tray goes back up in there, and we're done. And now I just have a little bit of uh, a mess of shrapnel of salad laying all around the cutting hey, board. Did you show them your salad, honey? Did you lift it? Hold it up to the camera. Here. So that is dinner ready to go. Nice. So, and it takes me a lot less time when I'm not talking to do it. So, yes. Anyway. So, so we're going to set that. I'm going to actually put this out in the fridge because we're not eating just now. No. So, and you can, um, I'm going to put a lid. Where's my lid? Did you take my lid away? Can I have my lid I back? Could. And I'm going to set that out in the garage fridge since this one's full of salads. Or where's the spot it came from? Maybe I can put it back where it came from. Um, it can go here. It can go right there. Perfect. Okay, one. Okay, well, I've got that to look forward to for the next half an hour. <laughs> I'll let you, you can take the cutting board. Okay. Okay. Do you need it back or are you done with it? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm done okay. with that. I'm yeah. only have, I only have one more thing that I want to make today. Um, so we're going to our daughter's house for dinner tomorrow night and um, her husband's family is all coming. So there's gonna be a great big group of us. And uh, so I told our daughter, you know, I'll make anything. What do you want me to make? And um, as is usual, um, she said Caesar salad. So she actually bought everything, all the lettuce and cucumbers, tomatoes, shredded carrots, and all of that. Um, I was on my way to the store, so I called her and said, you know, I'm going to go get salad greens. She's like, don't, I already bought all that. Just make the dressing, Mom. So the dressing that I'm always requested to bring is my Ultimate Caesar dressing. Um, it's a nut-based dressing. And so this is, I'm making a double batch of it to take. And I like to make it the day before because it's better after it has gotten really cold in the refrigerator. Just like my ranch dressing is better the next day, um, the Caesar dressing is better the next day. And so everybody loves it. Uh, just our daughter and the kids are plant-based, our three grandchildren but everyone else that will be there besides Tom and I are not plant-based, you know, so Tom and I, our grandkids and our daughter, we're all whole food plant-based, but um, everybody else follows the standard American diet. Our son-in-law eats a ton of a whole food plant-based food because Katie doesn't make two different meals, but um, when he has the opportunity to eat, you know, some animal products, he does. So. I'm going to be making the salad dressing to take and I'll make it today. I'll chill it and then it'll be perfect tomorrow. I'll take it and we'll just toss it with the salad there. And everybody, even if they eat the standard American diet, they love this salad dressing and they ask me for the recipe, which is really fun. So Tom just dried, uh, yeah. rinsed out his bowl and yeah. dried it. Yeah, I just, some warm water and a quick swish with the with the dish rag, whatever you have in there, or brush, and then and then you dry it out immediately, and that's it. It's good to go for tomorrow now. Yeah, and they do get a bit of a green patina in the middle of them that you may have seen when he showed you that one. 
and we'll talk more about that on, um, on Tuesday. And so tomorrow, um, what our daughter is making is she's going to make a, um, it's a recipe that I used to make before we went whole food plant-based and she has veganized it and I have veganized it. And um, so she makes it for company and it's, it's in our, if you, if you have the batch cooking with Tammy um, course and ebook, it's in here and it's a tomato lentil penne pasta. So um, sometimes she will make one with some um, meat for the um, people who don't eat like us. So, um, but, and I don't know what she's doing tomorrow, but she didn't have any gluten-free pasta. And as some of you may know, I have a gluten sensitivity. And so uh, tomorrow morning, I will make one batch of this. I'll take the casserole with me. And if anybody wants to try it, they can. And um, just so they can taste what a gluten-free pasta tastes like. But it's vegetables, lentils, marinara. Um, we'll use a lot of fresh basil on top. And then she's also going, and we'll have the Caesar salad. She has bakery bread that will heat up. It'll be like a sourdough um, bread. You know, we're here in California, close to San Francisco. You got to have sourdough bread for everyone. Um, so we'll have that. And um, then she's going to make some kind of a, a dessert. And I thought I would make Chef AJ's um, um, Goodman peanut chews. And those were a recipe that was in the bundle that we just sold recently. And I know that everybody's going to love those, whether they eat like us or not, because they taste like a candy bar. They're delicious. And so... Um, Did you put so, these up for the sweets? Yes. Okay. We need to stand them up. Are they cool enough? Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll take them onto the garage. Okay. So, um, so that's what I'll do tomorrow. Is I'll make my um, pasta dish with gluten-free pasta. It'll still taste delicious and amazing. And take that. We'll have the Caesar salad. And um, it'll be great. And then I'll have a dessert there that I can also have. This is what I do with the potatoes. So these are the Yukon Golds that I made. And you see, I just stand them up on end so that I put the fat end at the bottom. And that way they don't get um, crushed. And we're going to probably have to move like some of my fruit or something I'm in there. I'm just put these out there for now. Okay, perfect. And yeah. then the, yeah, there's a whole this. bunch of stuff stacked under where these goes. Yeah. And so, and yeah, we got to do a little rearranging. Um, and so, and there's the sweet potatoes and see how we stand those up as well. And that way they don't get squished. Or mushy or wet. Right. Yeah. And then once they start, right now they're really soft, but once they cool they kind of like solidify and become a little bit firm again mm -hmm. wouldn't you say yeah and so um and it changes the starch of potatoes mm -hmm. once they've been cooked and refrigerated they become a little more resistant um starch which means they don't spike your um, blood glucose like um if if you eat it right after it's cooked so so I'm going to make, I'm making a double batch of this dressing. This dressing recipe is on my blog. I also have a nut free version of it as well. So um, I have a vegan Caesar dressing nut free. And then I also, I have, we call it the ultimate one because this one does use nuts. And um, I don't use cashews because our grandson is allergic to cashews so i don't ever want to have any kind of cross contamination so all of my blender containers um, that i have now have never had cashews in them and we just don't keep cashews in the house he's allergic to cashews pistachios and hazelnuts so um, i'm gonna grab my what you do with this Oh, that I got that out. I was going to have that as a snack. I can show everybody. And then I started batch cooking and I never got to it. So this was going to be part of my lunch. That's your dessert now for dinner. It will be. Or it might just be my dinner. Okay. Um, I'll at go this put that point. in the fridge. Thank There's you. lots of room in the other fridge. There is. Oh, actually, if you can just set it there, I don't mind it to be more like room temperature, okay. actually. Um, the pineapple just has a lot more flavor. So I did buy a watermelon at Costco and I bought a. Uh, a pineapple and so I cut those up yesterday and if the fruit is already cut up and in containers ready to eat we will eat it 
that is just part of my strategy with the batch cooking is that we always have food to eat that is quick and easy. So we're hardwired to seek out the highest calorie density food for the least amount of effort. And so I always wanna make sure that whatever food has the least amount of effort here to eat is healthy food. And so that's why I really believe in the batch prepping. Plus I just don't wanna spend all my time in the kitchen. I love to you know, cook a little bit and eat a lot. For days. I'm yes. going to go up and add a couple of the links I mentioned. In okay, the is your um, I'm a, I'm mic on, on or off? It's on, but I'm going to put it on, on, on standby. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you good? So I think I am. You your tray there. And so I'm going to be running the um, blender. And you're not on Zoom, so it'll, it'll be loud for everybody. So. It will be loud for everybody. Okay. So I won't be able to make it quiet for you all. I'm so sorry. So um, the recipe for the dressing you can find on Nutmeg Notebook, the blog. So just Google Nutmeg Notebook Caesar Dressing. You should get two, the nut-free version, and then you should also get the ultimate um, Caesar. I always make the ultimate one when I'm making it for company because it's much richer. Um, it has that really, you know, because obviously with all the nuts in it, and um, I'm using the, um, I'm just using blanched almonds. If you have almond flour, you could use almond flour. I would use a little bit less almond flour. I don't, I have not just taken and turned these into almond flour to determine like a cup of, of almonds um, blended into a flour, how much is that measurement wise? I don't know. I haven't done that. Um, so you could use cashews. If you can have cashews, you could use cashews instead of this. The almonds are harder than the cashews, but the Vitamix has no problem blending them. And so I'm going to put that, and I'm not going to give you measurements because I've doubled the recipe and you can get the measurements from the recipe on the blog and it's a printable recipe on the blog. Or if you have my, um, if you have my batch cooking with Tammy course, then you would have it in the ebook. Or if you have the cooking for company, the recipe is also in this ebook, and this is the newest ebook that we have. It, we haven't even got it up on the website yet to sell it, but it was in the bundle that we just got done um, participating in. And so, um, and if you want to buy one of our courses, we have a 30% discount code, Nutmeg30. So you would go to nutmegnotebook.com, you would click on courses, and then when you're purchasing it, the discount code nutmeg30 will get you 30% off um, both of our courses. And then as soon as we get the cooking for company um, cookbook up, then it'll be 30% off for you as well. So um, we have the um, nuts in here, the almonds that I'm using, and then um, these are dates and um, can you all see it? These are dates that I soaked in some boiling water because I had them in the fridge, so they were hard. If you soak them in boiling water first, then that makes them nice and soft and they will just blend up easier. These have probably been soaking for about an hour because um, we went live. So that's what happens. Then I also have garlic, fresh garlic, that'll go in there and um, capers. These are really nice. Um, we're getting that kind of briny flavor from the capers. The capers do have sodium in them. You can soak the capers in cold water and that will help draw out some of the sodium if you have a problem uh, with the sodium. And then Dijon mustard. You could use the um, salt-free mustard if you can find a salt-free mustard the Westbray company discontinued their salt-free so i think there's some other brands now um, but i love the dijon i like the tang that it has and um, this is joy j-o-i almond milk base and so it's a plant-based um, base 
to make your own almond milk at home and we buy it you, when Tom showed the basil plant you probably saw that big bucket there and we buy it by the bucket you reconstitute it at home yourself with water it's one ingredient it's just almonds and so but it makes it quick and easy um, to use especially for recipes I love using this for recipes so I'm just going to scrape this in here and then I'm going to be putting um, my water in here and then this with the water makes my almond milk and so we're not paying for a lot of packaging and we're not paying for water um, which when you buy the already made almond milk you're paying for all of that packaging all those cartons as well as um, water and some nutritional yeast. Now this gives it that cheesy flavor because there is Parmesan cheese in a Caesar dressing. So this kind of mimics that same kind of umami flavor that Parmesan cheese has. And so if you have a sensitivity to Parmesan cheese, you can, you can leave it out, um, that's okay. And then apple cider vinegar, again, we need that kind of astringent, we need that um, tangy flavor of the vinegar. And then I usually taste it after I make it as well to see if it needs any adjustment. Now, when I make this for us, I don't put salt in it, but because I have a large group of people tomorrow who don't eat like me, then I did, um, I have salt in it. I have garlic powder. Even though we have fresh garlic in here, I also have garlic powder because we're layering the flavors and that's what helps make this taste so good. So I'm going to put that in. I also have chia seeds. That helps make this nice and thick. And then we also were getting the bonus of the omega-3s in there as well. And I'm going to put in some um, freshly ground black pepper. Uh, this just adds a nice flavor to it, kind of helps everything um, taste super delicious. And then we will add our water. And I'm not going to dispose of that um, date liquid because it's sweet now. And so you can use it in like a, a, if you're baking muffins instead of some of the milk, you can use that or you can use it to sweeten your coffee or your tea and so then i'm just going to put the water in and if you don't have a high powered blender you would want to soak your nuts first and you can soak them in um, some boiling water or very very hot water and that will help soften them so that your blender will be able to blend them. But this is a Vitamix blender. If you have a Vitamix or you have a Blendtec or um, you know one of the more high-powered blenders, then um, it's not, not anything you have to worry about. So I do have a tamper in case I need it. And we're just going to turn this on. Is it plugged in? It's not plugged in. That could make a difference, you guys. That's why it wasn't working. So let me get it plugged in here. Here we go. Now let's turn this baby on. Here we go. So this is a Vitamix A3500 that I have, and this is the um, large container on it. So I'm going to get it started. You're not, it's going to be really noisy, and I'm not going to be able to talk while it runs um, because you just won't be able to hear me.
Okay, so I will blend it more, but I, I'm not gonna make you guys stay on and listen to it, but I want you to see, you see how wonderful and creamy it is. It looks amazing. Um, I like to really make sure that the chia seeds and the nuts get well blended. Oh, it's looking, it's looking pretty good, um, but I'm gonna give it probably another 45 seconds or so, but it's, it's looking good. I'm just gonna do a little taste test. I did learn this from a chef. Mmm. Mmm, yeah. It's great. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more vinegar to it because I like it to be just a little more um, tangy. And so, but I'll do that <clears throat> when we're done here. Let's see, a little extra there. And then what I do is I will pour it into these two jars and put the lids on, put it in the refrigerator, and then by tomorrow evening when we go to um, the family dinner, it'll be nice and chilled and the flavors will have had time to uh, melt to meld together and it will be so delicious. And it coats the romaine lettuce beautifully and, um, and everybody will love it. It'll taste really, really delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my chair and I'm gonna look at your questions and answer your questions here. Get it in the containers and get it in the fridge. And there were questions about um, chopping the salad. We don't chop them until the day we're going to eat them um, because they, you know, one, it would be too much work to chop all 14 salads um, at one time. Although I will tell you, we timed them to see how long it takes us. And it takes us about three minutes when we're not on camera and we're not um, chatting to you all. It takes about three minutes to chop our salads when we don't have an audience. And it takes 30 minutes for us to make those 14 salads. We can make those in 30 minutes. And so that also goes much faster. And so in 30 minutes, I make, the, that's 14 meals in 30 minutes. And then um, the day that we chop it and then we add some things to it, that probably takes us about 15 minutes probably mm -hmm. to do all of that when we don't have, you know, when we're not chatting with someone because we'll have our toppings and things ready to go. And so then we just pull out of the fridge what we want to put on top of it and then we're, um, we're good to go. That's and why the picture went away. My battery died. Oh, but it was plugged in. That is so weird. I thought it was plugged in, but... Yeah, evidently it wasn't. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, um, Caroline says, thanks so much for a great show. I can see you now. Um, Marie says, thank you, Tammy and Tom. Have a great evening. Tia says, it looks amazing. And um, so, yeah. So, this little bit of batch prep is done. Oh, I have the, the tempeh is done as well. So, um, we're looking good for the rest of the week yeah you've just got to make rice because we're out of um perfectly rice. granular brown <laughs> rice perfect yeah we're you... completely out of perfectly granular brown rice cooked cooked we have a whole like 15 pound bag of of uncooked, uncooked. granular brown yes. rice but it's not perfectly cooked granular brown rice that's right that's right so 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 anyway the chopped salads are a wonderful way to get in all those dark leafy greens if you look at i did a reel the other day and i had 34 i think um different plants in my one salad so um i did so you were a reel. getting your daily dozen in yeah get my daily dozen okay. in and then some okay so anyway if tom's ready to eat thank you guys so much for joining us for this impromptu um, batch cooking video. We really appreciate that you did that. Make sure that if you're watching it um, before Tuesday the 19th, tune in on Tuesday the 19th to hear about the Holland Bowl Mill Imperfect Sale. We have a and, couple of questions here. Okay, sure. So uh, Tammy says, can you see my question above? But I am scrolling a bit here and I'm not seeing a uh, question, Tammy, unless it's way up in the chat. Okay, can and you type it for us again? Um, we didn't have any moderators today um, helping us, and so we've missed it. So if it's in there, it's way up in there, because yeah. we've been scrolling for, you're back about a half an hour now. Right, so we don't see it. Um, so if you could... Retype that, and then uh, while we talk again. to Maria. 
retype your question. Um, how would I, oh, uh, Maria says, hi, I'm new to your channel. How would I order your book? And so um, our newest book isn't up yet. Um, later this week, it will be up on the, um, on the website for sale. So you would go to nutmegnotebook.com and you would click on courses. And then in the courses, you will find it. And this yeah. is our newest Yeah, one. the salad batch prep is in there. This one is in there. And this one, um, mm. um, you, you were looking where's the salad batch prep? I think it's in here. Uh, and then this one I'll be putting in, in well, later this week, this or is, early next week yeah. is if the you, goal, this before is, Tuesday. This is the one you want if you're going to get the um, one of the wood bowls. Uh, you will want the beautiful chopped salad course because this has videos showing you how to chop the salad, answer your questions. I give you lots of ideas on you know, what to put on your salad, as well as um, recipes, the um, how to basics on how to batch prep the salads, and then um, salsa toppings, all kinds of fun um, things, recipes in here to make your salads wonderful and delicious. Uh, Barbara says, which dressings do you make regular besides what you made tonight and the ranch? Uh, we like the, the lemon dill and the lemon dill recipe is in here. And then we also um, recently we put it, we shared it on the blog. And so we like that one. And then the creamy um, balsamic. And quite honestly, I use um, California balsamic vinegars and salsa a lot as well um, if i have dress if i do make dressing we will use it but um, we like kind of quick and easy a lot of times and so we'll use the balsamic dressings um, stephanie simpson says do you use whole or ground chia in the caesar dressing i use whole because i'm putting the chia seeds in the vitamix and the vitamix is going to completely puree those here's for tammy's me. question and do you wash your greens. Oh, uh, greens, and let your greens dry, even if it's triple wash. I don't. Um, she said she found an insect in hers, and she um, wouldn't have if she hadn't washed it. And that can happen, especially with um, organic. But it's you know, really rare. It's, it, it's not that it hasn't happened. It's just really rare. Right. Yeah. Right. So maybe a tiny little, cutest little green worm. Which probably would taste good, but that wouldn't. I've be never good. found I've never found anything in my washed greens, but I have like romaine. Uh, romaine oftentimes tends is, to be dirty. Yeah, yeah, and they I rinse used, it. I used to use romaine, um, but I quit because I was having to like triple wash the romaine, and then it would be so waterlogged that it was really hard for me to get it dry enough to batch prep salads with. So really, for me. The triple washed greens that are very dry are what I have found works the best to batch prep salads for a week, and yeah. that's that's what I'm after. And I do rinse bok choy. It just it has the way it comes at the base. It's just a natural little uh, uh, field dirt collector. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much have to rinse that bok choy bit. every time. As I peel them off, I rinse them, and then they go, yes. go into my bowl for my Yeah, leeks, soup. lots of things you have to wash, wash, yeah. and wash. Um, so it's a personal preference. If that makes you more comfortable, that's what you will need to do. But just know that the salads may not last for a week. Okay. You might be able to make them for three or four days because it's very hard at home to get all those greens dry enough to batch prep I'll take salads ahead. Question. So, so Carmen Sita says, how long does it take you to chew all the salads? I slowly graze, this is the word I always use, I graze on mine for a good 35 to 40 minutes to eat the salad that we, if you were watching earlier, that I uh, chopped in the bowl, otherwise you can go back and watch it. Um, it's a full nine cups of greens. Seems like a ton of food. I did put some add-ins in there for starches and proteins and whatnot, but it's mostly water and I, I don't feel, you know, I have to go to the bathroom afterwards <laughs> because there's a lot of water in that. 
but touche. But 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 my but I'm not feeling all bloated and with my belly sticking out. No. So okay. So I take my time though. I want that salad to last 35 or 40 minutes. I want to like watch to the graze. whole. I will. I wanted to watch the whole program that we're watching. Right. So Stephanie says the Joy powder products like powder or is it like powder milk we used to use? So um, the only powder one that they have is their oat milk. And, um, and it's the lowest fat one that they have. So if you like oat milk and you're looking for a low fat alternative to plant milks, then that is a really good one. Again, it's one ingredient, it's just oats. Um, however, it is quick, they, whatever their process is. It's very refined in a very specific way to re-dissolve in water yes. to turn into oat milk. Yes, it's not the same as taking oat flour and trying to make um, oat milk from oat flour. Their oat powder is super, super fine, more fine than anything that I can do at home. And then the cashew, the almond, um, the nut-based ones, are um, they are creamy. So kind of a little bit like almond butter, but different because it doesn't taste like almond butter, but the nut bases are creamy and they are shelf stable. They don't have to be refrigerated. Um, we do refrigerate them it, because it keeps them from separating. Keeps them from separating. But um, so if you look up Nutmeg Notebook Joy milk bases, we've had them on our. We've had the um, company people on uh two or three times yeah with us and so and they talk all about the product in those videos and they demonstrate how you can um use them yeah so just, just on youtube search not make notebook uh j-o-i interview they'll come up yeah okay yeah. and we, right. we love them and so um we use those a lot okay so, so let's, let's, i think that's it okay we're gonna go we okay. will see you tuesday morning at 9 a.m sharp uh, here on YouTube. Uh, we'll be also theoretically simulcasting to Facebook and Instagram to let some of those people also know about if the bay, about works. the bull sale, but you YouTube folks right here know about it first. <laughs> so, it's true. So anyway, okay. One batch prep at a time. What, what are we doing today? Batch prep. We're doing batch prep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thanks so much, you guys. Give us a thumbs up if you would. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to um, the YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit that bell so you'll get notifications when we go live. Go to Nutmeg Notebook and subscribe to our blog there so that you will get our latest updates via emails. And um, we thank you for joining us today. This has been really, really fun for us. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy. healthy. One, One batch, batch prep, prep at, at a time. time. Thank you. Woohoo! Good. Right. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday.